Good morning. Let's please turn in our hymnals for our gathering hymn number 176, Majesty, Worship His Majesty. Please stand as you are able. <laughs> Thank you. 
may be seated. Do you love the Lord this morning? Amen. You know what a wonderful time we had last week uh, with our two services and uh, uh, rejoicing and praising uh, God uh, for the gift of His Son and, and the resurrection uh, as we serve uh, the risen Savior today. And, you know, we have uh, continued to celebrate this week. Uh, we are going, uh, Kathy and I will be uh, traveling to Knoxville Friday for the called annual conference uh, where we are to be ratified uh, as uh, uh, disaffiliated from the United Methodist Church at, uh, that occurs this Saturday. And uh, we have been in preparation for that. And it's, uh, this is the week we've been looking for. And we praise God uh, that he has brought us through to this point. Uh, a couple of things I want to point out. We, got, we had our kitchen painted. Uh, those of you who were able to come and get pictures made yesterday probably smelled the paint if you haven't seen it. And we want to thank uh, uh, Dr. Teresa Marshall and Alan Marshall and uh, also uh, Brother Charles Greenway uh, for the hard work that you all did. And everything really looks good down there. It's bright. And we just praise God uh, for you and, and for the things that uh, have been done. And also another celebration, uh, we would uh, like to announce that uh, Sister uh, Alexis Ray Stavis uh, passed her bar exam. Let's give the Lord a hand. We've been praying for that. Uh, I found out this week, and, and, and we're just so thankful and praise God. Uh, and, and I know that she'll have a wonderful career uh, doing that. Uh, but along with uh, uh, that, perhaps you have a celebration. Perhaps you have a witness or even a testimony as to the goodness and the glory of God. Anyone? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any others? Well, you know, My sister. Grandson. We got some? Okay. Our grandson, Christian Marshall, is not a pro officer anymore. He's not a detective. Oh, amen. Amen. Did, did we see another one? All right. right sister right. Sandra? Oh, amen. That's fine. That is a celebration. Yes, certainly, certainly. Are there any others? Well, you know, Sister Tanya had mentioned about the weather. It's supposed to be 75 degrees today. Is God not good? Awesome. All the, and all the time. Awesome. Amen. We well, you know along with our celebrations, we also have concerns. And in your worship folders, under our concerns, it's a list of names that we lift up and pray for on a... a Weekly basis or daily, if you take this home, there are those that I want to, to uh, lift up. Other uh, things we want to pray for our called annual conference, as I mentioned, uh, celebration, but also pray that everything goes well. Uh, we want to lift up the Evelyn Johnson family and uh, uh, pray for her family. And uh, she was uh, related to Sister Margaret, who passed away this week. And uh, uh, we want to lift her family up as well. As the Robert Dutton family, uh, we will have his funeral today uh, at Mountain View. Uh, also, uh, we want to, uh, to lift up uh, Sister Barbara Cummings. Uh, as uh, you know, she had been battling uh, uh, cancer for a while. We want to continue to pray for her. As well as Sister Frida Stevenson. Uh, went and visited her yesterday. They uh, had taken her to the hospital. They kept her for tests that they're going to run uh, probably today and tomorrow, Brother Jim. Uh, we had a special prayer uh, for, uh, for her as well, and so we want to lift up Sister Freedom and, uh, and just ask, are there others that you would like to lift up in prayer this morning? Yes. Who is it? It is for the Harvest family. Through Harvest has to wait. She family. was their neighbor. Okay. Lift them up as well. Are there others? Just Mark? Well, I had mentioned last week a neighbor of mine, her husband, Harry Wells, yes. was going to be having surgery for cancer. They were not able to do the surgery. Okay. And so he has been placed in hospice care. Okay. Well, we'll remember uh, Harry Wells and also his family. All right. Do we have unspoken needs? God knows those as well, and he's able to do abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. And with that in mind, 
Let us go to the Lord this morning in prayer. Father God, how wonderful it is to see the sun shining and the birds singing, to see the flowers in bloom, and Lord, to be able to gather here as sisters and brothers in Christ. Come together, Lord, to praise and honor and worship you. And Lord, we come to you with thanksgiving in our heart for this another day of life that we might be able to afford an opportunity to share the Lord Jesus Christ with someone who is lost in spiritual darkness. Lord, we just thank you that we are able to come together freely as a, as a church body, as a nation, that, Lord, uh, the persecution is not reached here in America to the extreme that it has in the Middle East or in Europe, where there are those who have to meet secretly or underground, but that we can meet freely. And, Lord, we praise you for this wonderful opportunity that you have given us. And, Lord, we are continuing to celebrate the risen Christ, that Lord, uh, through his death and resurrection, he defeated death, he defeated sin, and we are able to go on and to, to worship and to live a wonderful and abundant life. And yet, Lord, we come to you with the needs of the many. Lord, for every name that is listed in our prayer concerns, for every name and every need that has been spoken here this morning, for every need that remains unspoken, and there are many. Allow us to bring them to thy throne of grace and boldness and lay them before thee, O Lord. And we ask, Father, but one thing. May thy will be done. For truly thy will is perfect and thy ways are perfect. Hear us and answer our petitions even now as we join together to pray with the confidence of thy children, the Lord's prayer. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. And this morning our responsive reading can be found in number 748 in your hymnals. Psalm 16. Our response will be response number two. With God always before me, my heart is glad, my soul is rejoices. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in the presence of I have a glorious heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. Even at night my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. The Lord has With God always before me, my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my soul rejoices. My body also dwells secure. You show me the path of life. With God always before me, my heart is glad, my soul rejoices, let us stand.
of our Lord Jesus.
Now, that doesn't mean that anything that a thief stole from us is going to come back, and that doesn't mean that we're always going to have the ice cream that we want, and that doesn't mean that I always have a box of fresh crayons. That means that we, when we trust Jesus, can have something that is wonderful and full and abundant that no thief can ever take. And that's the heavenly meaning of the earthly story. And that thing that we can have is eternal life. When we trust in Jesus and ask him in our hearts, we can live forever in heaven and no thief can take that away from us. And of all the people in the world, that gives us the very best reason to put on a happy face. That's right. Let's have a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you so much for your love to us. A love so big and so wonderful that you sent Jesus so that we could trust in him, take him in our hearts, and live with him forever. And that's something that no thief can ever take away from us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. We got some Thank you, Sister Margaret. Now we will continue our praise through the giving of our gifts. I'll ask if the ushers would come.
newness of life. Today's scripture passage can be found in the Gospel of John. It's a familiar passage. It uh, begins with the 10th chapter of the 7th verse. John writes, as our Lord is speaking, it said, Then Jesus said to them, and who was them? The disciples, who's that? That's us. So Jesus said, saying to us, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. The word of God presented to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father God, truly your word is truth. And you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Lord, you came that we might have joy, a joy unspeakable and full of glory in our hearts. You came that we might be able to rejoice in the life that you have given us. And Lord, we thank you for this life and we thank you for laughter. We thank you for friends. We thank you that you are our peace, that you are our joy, that you are our rock, that you are our refuge, that you are our sustainer and our redeemer and our savior, that you are our God that we are your children. I ask now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart might be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. Amen. You know, it's an interesting story that you told there, Sister Margaret. I was thinking about uh, what I look forward, not every year, but I always look forward to getting a new pair of tennis shoes and blue jeans before school. Do you remember... They used to give us those blue jeans that were way too big, and we'd have to roll them up. Remember, we'd go to school, we'd have blue jeans rolled up. And I, you know, I used to be embarrassed by that. And then I remember I had went to the theater on a Saturday. You could go and watch Westerns for a quarter. And uh, they, they usually had a double header. I paid my quarter, and I went in there, and John Wayne had blue jeans on, and they were rolled up. And I saw we strutted around with those. And I remember one year, my aunt got me and my cousin Cherry, when mom, my grandmother, was raising us, a box of those Crayolas, the 64 counts. You remember those? And you know what they had in the back? A sharpener. And, and that was the last box of crayons I ever got. <laughs> it lasted for years. But why do we tell you this? Because there are things in life that we should look forward to. There are things in life that we should rejoice in. And you know, often when we get with friends or relatives, we think back and, and we tell stories about when we grew up and the things that we used to do. And I think one of the, the places that we do that the most, and it's odd that it is, that's a paradox in a way, uh, in a way perhaps not, it's at funerals. That at funerals, families get together and they begin talking about the one who had passed on and they talked about what they said or what they did. And they started talking about all of these memories. And almost invariably, someone will say before the funeral's over, we need to get together more often. Amen? Amen. And we do. We need to get together to rejoice in the life that God has given us. That he gave us a life. And it's a life of abundance, and we have so much to be thankful for, especially here in this great country, America, for the freedoms that we have, for all of the, uh, everything that we, we possess and the things that, that we're able to do. But you know, many believers think that happiness or joy is a sin. There are those who don't want to be seen laughing or, or cutting up, especially not in church, but I think that's where we should rejoice the most. The Apostle Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice, just like in, in the song we sang and in the song that we read. God wants us to rejoice. God wants us to celebrate. That's why with the feasts 
of Israel that he always said, come together for a week, do no work, but worship and rejoice, rejoice in me. He wants us to do those things. But you know, some believers, it's, it's almost like, well, I found the Lord, now I'm miserable. <laughs> if you really know the Lord, you can't be miserable. If you really know the Lord, you can't sing the blues all the time. There's going to be moments in our life when things aren't going well. There's going to be sadness because that's what this world is about. There's going to be troubles and tribulations. Jesus said in the world you will face many tribulations, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. And we can overcome our troubles and our tribulations because they're temporary. You know, I remember saying uh, uh, a saying that used to go around whenever we go something and, and somebody would tell me, don't worry about it, this too shall pass. Do you remember that? And it will. It will pass because everything is temporary in this life. Even our joy is fleeting. And we may get together with friends and loved ones and laugh and cut up and just have a good time. Never want that day to end. And then the next week or something we may hear of a tragic event or a sickness that's fallen upon someone or even their passing. And suddenly, you know, we realize that this life is fleeting, that we are mortal. You know, on our Ash Wednesday service, we're reminded of that. From ashes we came, and to ashes we shall return. But Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Because in that day when we go over, when we cross over that spiritual Jordan and enter into the land of promise, the spiritual land of promise, and we're there residing in the new Jerusalem as it comes down, it will be an endless day. It will be a day like when we get together with our friends, and it never ends. We will rejoice always in the Lord. There will be no sadness. There will be no separation. There will be no sickness. There will be no sorrow. There will be no tears. All of that will have faded and passed away. And our abundance of joy and rejoicing will be full. And it will be eternal. But you know, people in this life, they're, they're not able to outwardly express joy. Some people have a hard time saying, I love you to someone. And to a lot of these people, they're missing out on the best thing of life, the abundance of life, the joy of life, the love that God has placed in our hearts. And others seek, thing, seek joy in things, a new car. Or perhaps they'll, they'll think of things that are pleasurable in life, addictions or gambling or any number of things that they may become addicted to. But these are all fleeting because the new car smell will fade. The gambling, the money that you might have won will be spent or the things that you lost will only bring sorrow. So where is our peace? Where is our peace when we are faced with the loss of a loved one? Where is our joy or our peace? It's not found in the things of this world. It's found in one and one only and that is the Lord Jesus Christ who came to give us life that we might have it more abundantly. Jesus is our peace. That's where we find the abundance of life. And so I, I ask a lot of believers, I remember when I was, was chaplain and I would, I would counsel a lot of men that would come in and talk to me and they come in with a sorrow look on their face a lot of times and said, is there joy in your life? And I usually got one of two answers. Yes, chaplain, I have joy in my life even here because I have given my heart to Jesus. I've been born again, and I know that he's with me. And the other is I'm not going to have any joy in my life till I'm out of this place. And they may use a swear word or something. Because you see, there's two types of people. There's the, the saved and the lost. And the truly saved have joy in their hearts. The truly saved, saved are able to say, I love you. The truly saved are able to laugh and rejoice in the things that life has given us, even though we face hardships daily. And we don't know what kind of hardships that our friends are going through. But as the Apostle Paul told us, rejoice in the Lord always. Misery and suffering are not the fruit of the Spirit. 
rejoicing and joy are, are part of the fruit of the Spirit. It, it's found in, in Galatians. I want to read this to you. In Galatians 5 and 22, when the Apostle Paul is writing to uh, 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 the church, and he says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. Because when you are born again, the fruit of the Spirit becomes part of you. That you're able to love one another and to be able to express that love. That you have a joy in your heart, a joy unspeakable and full of glory that you're able to share with others. That you have self-control and selfishness, gentleness. That through all of these things, God has given to us life. And he has given it to us more abundantly. These are the things that we should focus on. Because there is joy found in hope. Usually the people without joy in their life, the people who can't rejoice, are also people who have no hope. Who have no hope for a future. Who have no hope for an eternity. Who have no hope for the tribulations and the trials that they see in life. But to be able to know that God is in control. That God has taken our life because we have surrendered everything to Him. And when you surrender it to Him, then fear fades away. Death has no sting. The grave has no victory. Because Jesus has overcome the grave. He has overcome death. He has overcome the tribulations of this life. And we know that because he is in our heart, that we will be able to overcome them as well. That even if we die, so what? What does that mean? You know, you ask somebody, what's the worst thing that can happen? Well, I could die tomorrow. You know, there's things worse than death. We talked about this in our Bible study the other night in Acts. There are things worse than death. And we know that. But what if we did die? What does that mean? That means that we will be reunited with that great cloud of witness who, is, who have gone before us. That means we will be in a place where there will be no suffering, no tears, no sorrow. That means we will be in a place where there will be no longer a separation through death or anything else. But that we will be in the presence of God himself. And we can rejoice completely and fully for all of eternity. Abundance of life and eternal life. That's what is promised to us. That is our hope. And we know it because Jesus has expressed it. And he appeared before 500 at one time. He overcame it. So if you want happiness, you have to have hope and confidence in God because he is the Lord of your life. Can I hear an amen? amen. We have to have it in him. Our hope rests in him. Our joy rests in him. Our peace rests in him. And he gives us loved ones and family members and brothers and sisters in Christ that we can express that joy with. And they help us and they strengthen us, but they came from him. They came from him. Have you ever had one of those days where it just seemed like nothing was going right? And then somebody came up and gave you a hug and said, it's all right, sister. It's all right, brother. I love you. And suddenly, a calm came over you. Suddenly, you were able to take a deep breath and, and revisit the issue that you were going through and say, well, you know, you're right. It's not that bad. And I do have somebody that loves you, loves me. Well, you have somebody that loves you. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he loved you so much that he was willing to come and hang on the cross at Calvary and give his life that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You have authority over your problems because you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because those problems are temporary anyway. And what can they lead to? Death. So what? If he's Lord of your life, it doesn't matter. Because when Jesus is Lord, then nothing else can be. Not doubt, not fear, not sickness. 
not heartache, not separation, and certainly not death, because he has overcome all of this on your behalf. He died for you. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The Apostle Paul told us, that is so true that no matter what we face, greater is Jesus Christ who lives in me than whatever problem I face. This world has no authority over me. This world has no authority over you. Because as a child of God, you have been born again. Not under the authority of this life, but under the authority of heaven. Under the authority of the eternal life that God has given us. This world will pass away and everything in it, but we will live on. We will continue to be with him. And even though I might be imprisoned or even killed, nothing can separate me from the love of God. That's the promise that we have. The abundance of life is not found in the things of this world. The abundance of life is found in Jesus. And he's all we need. And there may be those who are watching. There may be those who are struggling. There may be those who are, are worried about tomorrow or worried about a, a sickness or worried about financial difficulties. There's any number of things. There's myriad things in this life that we could stress over, that we could worry over. But if you know Jesus, and you can give it to him. Because greater is he who lives in you than he who lives in the world. Do you have Jesus in your heart today? That's what I want to ask you. It's so easy. Whoever calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. Now I can't save anybody. But I can point to the one who can. And his name is Jesus. And my life is an example and an expression of of that love and that salvation that exists because of his love for me. And you can have it as well. All you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Savior. Enter into my heart. It's that simple. It's that simple. But you have to do it. You have to do it. And there are many who call on the Lord when they're on their deathbed. I remember my stepfather lived his whole life never saved or baptized. I loved him. We had some difficult moments. But I remember him calling me up from Ohio. I was serving as chaplain at King Mountain, serving Clearview United Methodist Church. And he said, I gave my heart to the Lord and I'm ready to be baptized. Can you come up and do it? And I said, sure. I went up, he told me he'd been diagnosed with cancer. And the doctor told him, he said, well, you've got two options. You can just live your life out and enjoy what days you have left, or you can take chemotherapy. But if you take chemotherapy, you'll be sick most of the time. You'll be in bed. You won't be able to do what you want to do. He selected to go deep sea fishing in Florida for blue marlin. He'd never done it. And he'd come back. We drove up to Ohio. I baptized him in his tub, in his bathtub. And his granddaughter, who was there, he, he had married again. My mother had passed away. And we sat at the kitchen table and began talking about the past, talking about our life. And he laughed. And I expressed to him how I felt about him. And I felt closer to him that day and in that moment than all of the years that I knew him when my mother was married to him. And it was because we had a kindred spirit that we both knew Jesus. And I'm thankful that he gave his heart to Jesus and now he's in his presence because he died two weeks after, the, after I baptized him. And I did his funeral. Well, the sad thing is that he lived his whole life without that joy that abundance of joy, that abundance of life that Jesus had to offer. He didn't know it till the last month or so of his life. Yeah, you can wait, and maybe you'll have an opportunity to receive Jesus. There's no guarantee, 
We have no promise of tomorrow. We might go out here today and get run over by a car or die of a heart attack or require some deficiency and disease that pass away. But you could have that abundance today. You could have that joy today. You could have that hope today and that promise of eternal life. All you have to do is receive Jesus because he is the abundance of life. May Sister Margaret, Brother Phil, come. Perhaps you've been struggling with something in your life. Well, today you can give it to Jesus because he has no authority over you. It has no power over you unless you give it that power and you give it that authority. Let us turn to number 469. Jesus is all the world to me. And if there's something that's troubling you, give it to him today. Either there where you stand or you can come down here at the altar and I'll pray with you. Let us stand as we sit. Spirit and manifested in a mighty way in this place so that when we leave here we can express that joy unspeakable and full of glory that we can share your love with others and be able to tell them of your great sharing love or that love has been shared with many who have gone on that love lives in our hearts and we remember it. We remember it from our parents. We remember it from our siblings. We remember it from spouses. We even remember it from children. And it's because you loved us first. 
Let us never let go of that love. For one day, we will be with them again, and we will be able to share that love anew, afresh, in abundance. Hear my prayer, for I ask it in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you.